Hello and welcome to level 4 tutorial getting ready for face recognition. I am Medesh and I will take you through this tutorial. Now the learning objectives of our tutorial will be the very basics which are that what is face recognition, what is the difference between face detection and face recognition, the origins and uses of this technology, what are various approaches to recognize a face, then we'll have a look at our selected face recognition method. What is the approach that we are going to use and why use it? And we'll have an introduction to it, to PCA-based eigenphase recognition method. Okay, moving on to the very basics. The first question, what is face recognition? Frankly, you'll find tons of good definitions, technical definitions online, but I'll give you a shorter version, a precise version, which is that face recognition is the task of identifying an already detected face as a known face or unknown face, and in more advanced cases, telling exactly whose face it is. So that's simple face recognition for you. How it's done, we'll have a look at that later. Let's have first a look at the difference between face detection and recognition. Usually, there is a lot of confusion and um, confusion among face detection and recognition because we use these terms interchangeably in a manner of speaking, but they're not. Technically, they're not. They're a little bit different. Let's have a look at that. The difference is that face detection is to identify an object as, as a face and locate it in the input image. Whereas recognition task on the other is to decide if this face, this detected face, is someone known or unknown, basing on a database of faces that recognition process uses to validate this input face. So face detection is the question, is that object a face? And face recognition on the other hand is question, okay, so this is a face, whose face is it? Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, image in this example. You see there is an input image with some faces in it. It is given as an input to face detection. Now face detection does its functioning and detects faces and gives out the result. The output is a detected face. Now this output from the detection is actually an input for face recognition. The face recognition takes this input face and it uh, performs the recognition against a database of faces or present somewhere and then it gives a final decision. The output of recognition is a final decision which is if this person is known then who is it? For example here it's it's known and Adam or if it's unknown so it has to give a final decision according to that. So there's a simple difference between both of these terms. I hope you remember that it's a sequential process at first you detect a face and then you recognize it. Well, let's move on. Next comes the need for using biometric identification. Human identification is a very basic societal requirement. By recognizing a face, you could easily detect a stranger or identify a potential breach of security. And in today's larger, more complex society, it isn't that simple with all the growing interactions electronically. So it becomes even more important to have an electronic verification of a person's identity. Because you see, people flock into a city from different nationalities, different people come, and it is very important to have their identification in human society. And you see that until recently, electronic verification was either done based on something the person had in their possession, like an ID card, or something they knew, like a password. But the problem is, with these forms of electric identification, that they are not very secure. They can be given away, snatched, lost, and can be forged by hackers. So the ultimate form of electronic verification of a person's identity is by biometrics, that is using a physical attribute of a person to make a positive identification. Because it can neither be lost, it can neither be taken away, it can neither be forged. For example, the fingerprints of a human, or the irises, or the face itself. So, therefore, it is the best solution possible in today's society. Then we have a question that why use face recognition instead of other biometric techniques? Of course, there are traditional biometric techniques like fingerprint recognition or voice recognition or iris recognition and they work pretty well too. Then why use face recognition? Well, in many applications like surveillance and monitoring, say, of a public place, these biometric techniques will fail because they're time consuming in such situations because there are a lot of people and it could prove therefore inefficient 
and the setup of the system could actually be costly as well. You know, uh, after all, because we cannot ask everyone to come and put a his or her, her thumb on a slide or an eye in front of a camera or do something similar. It will be just too, too naive to think that in a huge, uh, in a lot of uh, crowdy place, people will actually do that for you. If you are looking for, you know, uh, there are some terrorists on the loose and you ask people to come and do this for you, they will not because it's just not possible. So we need a system which is similar to the human eye in some sense to identify a person. So to get over this need uh, and using observations of human psychophysics, face recognition as a field emerged. It's much easier to have an image of all the people in the crowd and then detect faces from it and then actually recognize if there are some an unrecognized face, you know that there is your problem. There is a person, a suspicious person. Now, it's also important to have a look at the history of face recognition technology. Just a brief review before we start off with actually the approach we're going to use. So, I'll just give a brief overview of it. Now, automatic face recognition is a relatively new concept. Developed in the 1960s, the first semi-automated system for face recognition required the administrator to locate features such as eyes, ears, nose, and mouth on the photographs before it calculated distances and ratios to a common reference point, which were then compared to a reference data. But the problem with these early solutions was the manual computations of feature measurements and locations. It was too hectic, too much to do for manually, so the automation was not actually an automation. So, but in 1988, Kirby and Servish applied principal component analysis. It's a standard linear algebra technique to uh, apply to the face recognition problem. Now, this is considered some of a, somewhat of a milestone as it showed that less than 100 values were required to accurately code a suitably aligned and normalized face. PCA is the exact uh, method as uh, the technique that our approach will also use. How it uses it, we'll have a look at it later. Then, in 1991, Turk and Pentland discovered that while using the eigenfaces technique, the residual error could be used to detect faces in images. Now, this was a discovery that enabled reliable, real-time automated face recognition systems. And this is the, uh, the technique that we are also going to implement in combination with the PCA. Okay, although the approach was somewhat constrained by environmental factors, it nonetheless created significant interest in further development of automated face recognition techniques. The technology first captured the public eye from the media reaction to a trial implementation at the January 2001 Super Bowl, which captured surveillance images and compared them to a database of digital mugshots. This demonstration initiated much-needed analysis on how to use technology to support national needs. I suppose it must have gotten quite a bit boring uh, just reading about the history. Okay, well, anyway, we just uh, got the vital information, now we'll move on. And the next question we have is, what are the different approaches of face recognition? Different approaches have been tried by several groups worldwide to solve this problem, but so far, no system or technique exists which has shown satisfactory results in all circumstances, mind at all. Because, of course, there are techniques that have been giving good results, but not in every possible circumstance. You cannot say that a face recognition technique or algorithm is foolproof, 100% foolproof. It's not. So, the predominant approaches of face recognition can be divided into two main types of algorithms. One is geometric, which looks at distinguishing features. The other is photometric, which is a statistical approach that distills an image into values and comparing the values with the templates to eliminate variances. Now, the popular recognition algorithms include principal component analysis based eigenfaces. This is one that we are going to use. Another one is linear discriminant analysis. Then we have number three, elastic bunch graph matching using Fisher face algorithm. It's pretty well known as well. The hidden Markov model and the neuronal, the neuronal motivated dynamic link matching. Sorry for the stuttering. Okay, now it's a very important point we're going to note, read next. That is that 
the existing face recognition algorithms today are not 100% efficient yet. I repeat that point one more, once more that not a single algorithm existing today, at least as far as I know, they're not 100% efficient each and every time. Now, having a, after having a look at the uh, predominant availing, uh, available approaches, we'll look at our selected face recognition method. And we are going to use PCA-based eigenfaces method. The first question that should pop up in your mind is, why select this method? So let's have a look at why we are actually using it. You see, PCA-based eigenface method is at the easiest and simplest of efficient face recognition algorithms and is therefore a great place for beginners to start learning face recognition. Although it might not give security level results, but it would work good enough to be used in a beginner or a hobbyist robotics computer vision project. And another very big benefit of it is that implementing it in ASP.NET is very simple. It's just plug and play. That is, the PCA-based eigenfaces method for recognition is just as supported by EMGUC library as is Viola Jones method for detection. That is, you just have to call the functions of the classes, already coded classes, and there you go. So yes, you do not need to code the algorithm. Just call the functions. I hope that is very simple. And then better recognition algorithms do exist, but there are not plug and play in EMGSC like this one. You have to do a lot of coding effort to implement those algorithms in your project. So if you're going to have to, for example, implement LDA, then be my guest, but you're going to have to do, put in a lot of effort. And then PC eigenphase has an average efficiency of up to 70%. On average, you get 70% good results of recognition. So yes, it's not 100% uh, foolproof as none other is as well. But remember that since others are not also 100% efficient, so the better ones that you're going to have to code will still not give you 100% results. And I think whereas this one gives fine results out of the little effort you're going to put in. Hmm, so we decided we're going to use PCA-based eigenfaces because it has some benefits over the others. Then the next question you should be asking is, should I not try the other algorithms then? Well, I'm not saying that don't go for the al other algorithms. Of course, they're better. It's just that I suggest you to start simple, please. So if you're a newbie trying to implement face recognition, then I highly suggest you start with PCA-based eigenfaces method and then move on to the complex algorithms if you like. But if you're an advanced user doing research and all, of course, you should try the better ones and you know it's all going to be worth your effort. Okay, now I'll give you a summary.